With that reaffirmation of liberty has been the Liberty Bowl's commitment to bring nationally rated teams to Memphis and to showcase some of college football's greatest players. America's love affair with the distinct atmosphere of the bowl and its many great moments has made Christmas time at the annual Liberty Bowl a part of the national spirit. Liberty Bowl Classic is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Memphis and the Liberty Bowl Festival Association. The 27th annual Liberty Bowl week began with Mayors Hackett and Morris welcoming Baylor and Louisiana State University teams at a player's luncheon. With the food tasting as good as it looked, Hungry tigers and bears beefed up on Memphis hospitality. Celebrating the holidays with folks of the Liberty Bowl is like spending Christmas at home among friends. Some of Santa's favorite helpers caught the good cheer and some attention. Player performances at the mayor's party are always lots of fun. Student athletes from LSU and Baylor shared the stage, getting the place moving by breaking into song. During Liberty Bowl week, it's just one big happy family. Bakers and TGI Fridays, among the favorite Memphis eateries, welcome visiting players for team dinners. Their unique atmospheres are a big change from the typical training tables usually frequented by the teams throughout the year. Christmas night, the Hyatt Regency Memphis was home to Southern charm and grace at the annual black tie dinner dance. Memphis society had waited all year for this game. Guests were sparkling as they received a gift and made their way to the beautifully decorated ballroom. marvelous evening was enjoyed by all and let's do it again next year could be heard throughout the night the following morning the sixth annual fellowship of Christian athletes breakfast occupied the busy Hyatt ballroom Memphians turned out to hear the important messages communicated by guest speakers and players from both Liberty Bowl participants With the kickoff just a day away, the pregame festivities highlight, the Liberty Bowl luncheon took place. A record 2,000 Liberty Bowl guests assembled in the Memphis Convention Center complex for this most prestigious event, where honors were presented for outstanding achievements. The Academic Achievement Award to the University of Virginia for graduation of the highest percentage of its football player. The first ever Scripps Howard All-American Award to LSU linebacker Michael Brooks and National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame Award to the Liberty Bowl's founder, Bud Dudley, for his lifelong contribution to amateur football. Game head coaches Grant Taff and Bill Arnsberger addressed the crowd about being selected for a Liberty Bowl appearance. 
I have coveted this opportunity for many years in the coaching profession, and now that it's here, it's everything that I thought it would be. I said a week or so ago when I was here at the press conference that I've always been aware of the fine uh, halftime program that you presented to the nation, and I hope that uh, ourselves and Baylor will put on that type of show for you uh, Friday night along with the uh, TV and radio audience. Mr. Timmons Wilson. The 1985 Liberty Bowl Classic President, Albert H. Mallory III, introduced this year's Distinguished Service Award winner, Mr. Timmons Wilson founder of Holiday Inns Incorporated, and internationally known figure who revolutionized the hotel industry. As my life is ending, yours is just beginning. It can be as big and great and wonderful as you want to make it. I didn't have the opportunity to go to college. I had to quit and go to work. And not going to college has made me conscious of the value of college and of education. Not having things in my youth and childhood made me aware of the frustration that comes from needing something and not being able to get it. And the awareness gave me a great desire. Desire makes us stretch our abilities and reach beyond our grasp, and we realize our need for achievement. And you've got to remember that enthusiasm really makes the difference. Nothing has ever been achieved without enthusiasm. And certainly these two great fo football teams here are going to play in the Liberty Bowl have enthusiasm. The first pad pop only a few hours away, game enthusiasm was evident at the VIP brunch at the Memphis Hunt and Polo Club and free game buffet in the Mid-South Coliseum. Over 4,000 Liberty Bowl charter members and friends mingled, talked football, and indulged in the summertime picnic-style food. Pre-game festivities complete, the Tigers of LSU with a 9-1-1 record and second in the Southeastern Conference entered Liberty Bowl Stadium to meet the Baylor Bears, 8-3 overall and runners-up in the Southwest Conference. With ideal weather conditions, Tiger mentor Bill Arnsberger knew controlling the football was his key to success. Baylor's Grant Tapp, on the other hand, put stock in the knowledge his defense was third of the nation against the pass and 13th in total defense. With the kinks from a week's worth of luncheons, banquets, and parties stretched out, and a national television audience looking on, everyone was ready. Go Bears! Go Tigers! Go Tigers! The Liberty Bowl Classic was started by world-renowned Marguerite Piazza's singing of God Bless America.
defensive units reacted warmly to the crowd's spirit at game start, shutting down one another's offensive drives and taking no prisoners. Neither gave ground or came up with an advantage until James Lee stripped Gary James of the ball and Ron Francis recovered, giving Baylor the first break nine minutes into the game. LSU's defense stiffened, and when a third down pass skipped off the receiver's hands, forced a punt, no one, including Bill Arnsberger, expected what the Tigers would get in return. Directing blockers, Norm Jefferson broke free of the coverage and streaked down the sideline, evading the final tackler at the Baylor 28. The 79-yard touchdown run gave LSU the Liberty Bowl's initial score of 1985. Ron Lewis's point after made it 7-0 as the Tigers rode Jefferson's record-breaking Liberty Bowl punt return to what seemed like command of a tight, old-fashioned defensive contest. Into the fray stepped Cody Carlson, part two of the Bears' quarterbacking dynamic duo. It wasn't any surprise to Green and Gold fans that BU started to move. Carlson found John Simpson on a turnout, and the swift sophomore sped 59 yards to the LSU nine. <laughs> Baylor backers knew what a score meant and demanded an answer. Matt Clark's diving reception of Carlson's pass was the proper response. <laughs> Terry Seiler nodded the game at seven. Feeling the momentum had swung in their favor, Baylor gambled for an early advantage. After hopping nearly 25 yards, juggled and carried another 15 yards, the ball bounced out of bounds and awaited knowing whose it was. The announcement, Tiger Ball, didn't sit well with Grant Taff and his staff, but did leave the Bengals pinned at their own nine yard line. Forced to play with their backs to the goal line, the offense was out of sync and just stumbled. Possession returned to Carlson, and the junior sent the football airborne. Leland Douglas snared it at the three. LSU supporters call for a reprieve, and All-American Michael Brooks ended the quarter by playing governor. Baylor was still parked inside the Tiger 20 to begin quarter number two. Brooks and Henry Thomas chased Baylor back four more yards. What earlier looked like a sure six turned into an attempted three. Siler's boot lacked energy floating into the end zone like a winged duck. The Tigers had dodged the bullet, and it was their draw. LSU fired deep, intercepted with a dive at the Baylor 14. The highly vaunted BU secondary, who had come up big all year, had done it again. For Francis, it was his second big turnover in Liberty Bowl 27.
senior Tom Mickey took his turn at the Bear Helm. Mickey responded with a nine-play drive in which he accounted for 78 of the drive's 80 yards. LSU secondary was toasted again by Simpson's 43-yard catch and run to set up another Siler field goal attempt. The 28-yarder was true, and Baylor had its first Liberty Bowl lead, 10-7. The Bears were thrilled at being on top as LSU quarterback Jeff Wickersham tried to rally his troops for a score before halftime. Garland's Jean-Baptiste catch and an 18-yard run was the longest Tiger game all night. Wickersham couldn't get anything else started and the Bayou Bingle boys tried to kickstart their offense. The attempt failed, and Baylor's lead held up at the half. Liberty Bowl halftime extravaganzas traditionally are a signpost of American pride. This year's spectacle, a salute to the Star Spangled Banner, written by Tony Watrick and orchestrated by Ken Wells and Arlen Saylor, and involved both university bands, hundreds of Memphis volunteers, and added a new element, a million dollar laser light show a first for collegiate football. The halftime history lesson begins. In 1814, during the War of 1812, Francis Scott Key was dispatched to negotiate the release of an unjustly imprisoned American aboard a British warship in Chesapeake Bay. After doing so, Key was detained while the British Navy planned to bombard Baltimore's Fort McHenry. During the 25-hour shelling, Key watched and waited to see if the fort would surrender. So great was his pride after witnessing its successful defense, Key penned a poem entitled The Star-Spangled Banner, which later became our national anthem. With the laser spelling out verse on the field, let's listen to those inspiring words. Oh say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Yet another superb presentation of what America and the Liberty Bowl Classic stand for. Strength in our conviction for the freedom we enjoy. Second half action finds Baylor kicking off to LSU. Sam Martin's muff gives Tiger fans an early signal for what might lay ahead. Nothing can halt the bear defense as it gobbles up Wickersham and totally shuts down a frustrated Tiger offensive team. All right, Otis, one thing, Otis, set too high. I know. Down, 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 what? I know. The guy, I'm getting my hands on good. He's just coming into me, and he's popping, and when I go back, he's snatching me. And I'm just, I'm just having some trouble. Okay, then short set it. Short set it. Short set. Don't, don't be soft. Short set it. No, I'm not. I'm trying to be too hard. Short set Short, no, don't get away. He'll power rush you. Short set it. Huh? Mickey starts the second 30 minutes as he ended the first, red hot. Glenn Pruitt takes a screen to the seventh and has thoughts of hitting Liberty Bowl pay dirt. Only an old fashioned Tiger stand can turn back an inevitable touchdown and restore belief that it was still too early to fold up the tents.
Baylor settles for Siler's second field goal, a 35-yarder, as the purple and gold defense of LSU kept the margin at only six. Reacting like LSU plays are jars of honey. Bear defensemen continually stick their noses in. Forced to punt, Matt DeFrank uncorks a 64-yard boomer, a new Liberty Bowl record. A lone bright spot to an otherwise dark offensive Tiger night. Carlson and BU's offense is far from ineffective, methodically driving downfield. Two Baylor backs, Derek McAdoo and Broderick Sargent, do the majority of the damage on the ground. Carlson caps the time-consuming drive with his second TD strike. Simpson's third Liberty Bowl catch was the crowning to a night of three receptions good for 117 yards. Carlson's two-point conversion toss gives Baylor a 14-point lead, the same amount he is personally responsible for. Confident they can make it stand up, Baylor cheerleaders dance as their defense puts the final touches on one of the most devastating performances in Liberty Bowl history. Limiting LSU to only nine first downs and a mere 192 yards in total offense for the game, while not allowing a second half first down until late in the fourth quarter, the Bears up in the Tigers sending faithful followers into ecstasy. players bask in the spotlight of the moment. Grant Taft, head coach of the Bears for 14 years, savors the well-deserved ride atop his players' shoulders. The 27th annual Liberty Bowl Classic victory belongs to Baylor, 21 to 7. LSU players and coaches joined the victorious Bears in savoring the climax to a great week spent in Memphis that no one will ever forget. During post-game activities at midfield, Coach Taft was presented the trophy symbolizing Liberty Bowl excellence. Memphis-based Holiday Inns Incorporated presented Baylor's junior quarterback Cody Carlson the most valuable player trophy for his outstanding leadership and play. The trophies are rewards for individual and team merit, but the true American cherished value, pride, spirit, and liberty, captured so dramatically in our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, were mirrored for all the world to see at this the 27th football game rightly called the Liberty Bowl. The 1985 Liberty Bowl Classic has been brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Memphis. And by the Liberty Bowl Festival Association.